Okay, hi. Hi, I'm BJ Miller. Uh, and the, we're going to do some more follow-up questions to our webinar today about patients and patients. <laughs> um, so over to you, Sonia, for the next question. Okay. This is one of the questions that we weren't able to get to. Have you seen any positives regarding patient care and patient experiences during the pandemic, like having FaceTime with a loved one in bed, et cetera, once we're on the other side? In other words, have our current restrictions given us any strategies that could be helpful going forward? Maybe I'm reaching for the lemonade, but wondering if you felt any such opportunities. Um, let me see, does it question like opportunities through the Zoom calls or the go to meeting through the technology or just in, or in general? Was there, can you read so the question? Yeah. Okay. Positives regarding patient care during the pandemic, things maybe that uh, have been helpful. Yeah. So, okay, great. Thank you for the question. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Yes, let's let's make some lemonade. We got us. We got to suck some lemons. We might as well have some lemonade here. So, yes, I do think. Uh, I think we should be asking this question again and again in the coming months because we're still in the in the mix here. And I don't. I personally, I'm not sure where all the lessons are just yet. But from my own experience, um, one of the upshots has been for start. Well sort of maybe the obvious is that we're all getting used to working with technology in a new way, or maybe not all of us, but many of us are getting used to working through technology. And on some level, if we can keep it working for us and not the other direction, that's good news. We're more becoming more adept at how to interact with one another from afar. Um, so, okay, there's some, there's some good news in that. I think as we've talked about in this webinar, is that's Great and amazing, but let's not fool ourselves that it's the same thing as touching each other and being each other's company. Um, so yes, we can explore this technology and see where it can go, but I also don't want us to get seduced into thinking it's oh, it's just the same as being in each other's company because I don't I don't think it is, um, and it's importantly different. So that's one point. Um, I think another thing that I'm feeling that's coming along here is that people are going inward. Um, people are um, dealing with themselves in new ways. That can be terrifying, and I know that's going in mental. I mean, depression's up, anxiety's up, substance abuse, et cetera. So it's not all great when we go inward, but I think there's something maddening and ultimately very therapeutic to be alone with our thoughts and our feelings. Um, the therapeutic is that we actually get to know ourselves and wade through this discomfort that otherwise all the distractibility of modern life can pull us away from. So it's maybe an uncomfortable period, but this time of going inward, I think will serve us in the long haul. I think that'll be very important. And one of the things you find there is even when you can't be with a loved one who's sick or somewhere or, or far away, by, touch, by touching in you the place where they live, by paying attention to how you feel and you think about that person, like that's where the actual relationship, the connection actually is most importantly takes hold is inside of us. So it's another way of going inward for ourselves is important, but also for our relationships is important. Meditate on that connection and that feeling because um, we do live in each other and, and opening that space I think is very beautiful. And another thing I'm happy to be coming along here. Um, and as I was saying all that, I thought of there was another thing on my list here. Oh. Well, I think another silver lining may be that we're realizing the shortcomings of our health system. We're realizing the shortcoming of a lot of our systems and how unprepared we were for a lot of this. And so another silver lining perhaps would be that we, if we, if we really, I hope to God that we, as we come out the backside of this pandemic, when we do, that we don't try to snap back into the old ways. In fact, because you never can go back really. And we should be learning a lot from this in terms of our systems. And the hope here would be that healthcare will look and feel different and be more responsive to us as people um, if we push it to do so. So uh, with crisis comes important change if we let it and push it and push for it. Um, so there you go. There's my there's an answer for now. Okay, great. The next question um, is about something that I've heard a few times coming from patients and families, um, and it is around the word miracle and wondering if you have a definition for the word miracle. Oh, a cool question. Uh, do I have a definition for the word miracle? <clears throat> I, 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 
I suppose it would be something happening that seems unfathomable and unlikely and one that wouldn't feel safe to predict, um, but happens anyway in ways that I just can't see and just can't understand. So something in a way unfathomable or beyond my comprehension that happens nonetheless. Um, I suppose that gets us in, uh, just making this up, but I suppose that's something to do with what a miracle is. And in this way, miracles are happening all the time. I mean, things are happening between us on this planet in this universe, so all sorts of things that we can't understand or can't see or but are happening nonetheless. And in this way, daily life is probably full of miracles. Maybe daily life is itself kind of a miracle. Um, but that may not be such a helpful distinction. I find myself using miracle with patients and families to name something that we can hope for, but that is not to be expected to happen. And if it does, we couldn't begin to explain why it does. So we can make space for miracles in our lives, uh, but you, by definition, you kind of can't necessarily bank on them or uh, or demand them, but you can be on the lookout for them. You can look for them. You can uh, want them. You can hope for them. But I do think it's wrapping it into this idea of hope. Hope can be a very powerful force if it's realistic. It can pull you along in some ways. But if you find yourself hoping for, almost planning for miracles, uh, then you got to be very careful because you're not disappointed if that miracle doesn't happen. I think it's very important to use that word. Okay, Mr. S Mr. Smith, let's hope for a miracle that they'll come up with that your, that your advanced cancer will spontaneously cure itself. I'm going to hope for that too. But calling it a miracle helps us know that it's not likely to happen. And if it does, wouldn't that be amazing? So there's, that, that's what I have to say about miracles. The next question is actually about the book. And this person asks, is there a way to request a book study partner, which the book seems at once daunting and necessary? Yeah, well, the book was written, A Beginner's Guide to the End. So Shoshana Berger and Sonia Dolan, and then the three of us made this book happen. Um, so yeah, it is, but the thing is, it's really meant as a reference guide. Uh, very few people are able to, or wanting to, or need to, or probably should sit and try to read it cover to cover. Rather, you know, skimming it, familiarizing yourself with the table of contents, and dipping into the specific things that you need uh, as you go along. So I think that the, as it goes with this subject of dealing with serious illness and death, there's only so much any of us can take at any one time. So, uh, you know, you open the book and close it too. Uh, get what you need and, and put it down and ruminate and think about it, talk about it. Let it provoke thought, not, not, not be the thought. Um, so that's one sort of approach to this book. It's like a reference guide almost. Um, you know, it would be a great, it's great fodder for like a death cafe or for friends like book, book clubs. It's a wonderful book. We've heard from folks who use it in, a, in their book club. And then they have this built-in community to discuss any one or the issues that come up as they come up. That can be very useful. You can organize that yourself. Um, increasingly, though, we do hope our webinars become a, if we can figure out a way for uh, those who are participating in our webinars, like you, to interact with each other. Um, there may be also in this community that we're kind of slowly uh, building together here soon enough may be ways for you to inquire of other folks listening in and maybe you'll find a buddy that way uh, so thanks for your question and thanks for your care for the book uh, obviously that that means a lot to us okay the last one is it's more of a thought but i think it's an important one um the effects of isolation on seniors and humans of every age is palpable and growing we are so much more than whatever we are during enduring physically mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a. Uh, I am with you. It's a. It's an important thing to say outright. Um, an isolation has been a scourge. Our previous and soon to be Surgeon General again, Vivek Murthy, um, has written a book about this and named a public health scourge of lo of loneliness and isolation. It's a. It's a stunning problem of modern life that was, predates the pandemic. In some ways, we're more connected than ever and more lonely than ever, and uh, it's complicated. So many things are these days. It's both. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, the good news is by the Surgeon General in general naming this as an issue, more and more people are aware of it being a public health problem, and also more aware that they're not the only ones 
is something uh, importantly serving about realizing that you're not the only one feeling lonely. Um, so if that helps at all, know that much. And increasingly, we're going to find ways, I think, to share time and space together in meaningful ways. Um, but all last last point here is there will be a time where we can touch each other again. And won't it feel, I mean, it's going to be, I, I picture sometimes a sort of a, a grope fest that's coming our way when we, we can touch one another again. Um, but meantime, touching into yourself, reacquainting yourself with yourself, reacquainting yourself with relationships you have that are that exist inside you is also a way to push back on sort of the lonely feeling. This won't last forever, um, but this is a great excuse to build some resiliency and a new level of durability. So when that next thing that separates you from anybody else comes along, you will have it in your bones, some experience of how to deal with it. Um, but the, the, the last thing I'll say is I'll remind us yet again, it's, this won't last forever. Um, we will be able to touch one another again. All right. Well, thank you, everyone who attended. Um, we hope to see you at a future event. Thanks, BJ. Thank you, Sonia. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.